Happy Thursday morning, everybody. I am Matt Scalisi, joining you as always here on Bammers. Ben Flanagan is off this week, uh, but I've got a, a, an exciting guest to take Ben's seat. Uh, he is he is not coming from the same perspective as Ben uh, here on Bammers, but but Wes has had a unique. Uh, Wes Siner, by the way, is my guest. I didn't. I didn't mention his name. I think I just figure everybody knows who Wes is. He's incredibly <laughs> famous at this point. Um, but but Wes has had a, a unique opportunity over the last couple of months, um, in that he has been, you know, behind the scenes with a level of access to a big name Alabama player, and it's the kind of thing that that I think most fans uh, and most of you out here watching us today are are big Alabama fans. Most of you guys would would kill to be in the position that Wes has just been in for a couple of months, and so we brought him on here today to talk about his experience and share kind of some some behind the scenes tidbits about what he's been doing and and to to set us up here really quickly. Wes uh, is the is the man behind the Road to the Pros series that we've been running uh, for the last month. Uh, the the incredible documentary that tells basically the whole life story of Najee Harris right up until uh, the moment that he was drafted, which we saw this week uh, with the final episode of the series. And so Wes has been the guy, he, he shot this series, he put it together, he, he produced it, he edited it, and uh, he's, he's the man responsible for the great stuff you guys have all been seeing. That series, by the way, brought to you by Milo's, uh, who has sponsored the whole series and and we're giving them a uh, another shout out here. And and I, I, Wes, before before we we get into it, I just want to invite everybody who's watching to you know our our Bammers show that we do here every Thursday is heavily built around audience interaction. We want you guys to ask questions. So if you guys have any questions for Wes about Najee, yes, about the process of making this documentary, bring it on. Uh, Norse hey. 95 on YouTube says that series was really dope. So we're already, <laughs> I mean, our, our reception that we've gotten to it so far, Wes has been very strong this year. Yeah. I mean, it, and I had a, I had a great time filming it. I could tell like almost right away when I started filming with Naji that like we had a really good subject for the series. I mean, this is something I've been doing for, this is the fourth year that I've done it. Um, and so I always do one Alabama player and one Auburn player and kind of, you know, tell their story as, as they're getting ready for the NFL. But I could tell like almost immediately with Najee, like once we started filming with him that we had, you know, something, something special and, and just a great personality, you know, always get on camera, you know, constantly giving me just like gold in terms of just like quotes, uh, at the things that he would say. And then by the time we sat him down for the interview, uh, you know, we talked to him for about two, about two and a half hours and, probably the best interview I've ever had in, in my career. And, and I've been doing video for four years. Before that, I was writing for 10 years. So I've had plenty of interviews. Um, Hundreds, probably. Prob Maybe yes. thousands. I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't I don't even know exactly how many I've had. But like Najee was, Najee ranks up there with, with the best of them. And uh, just thankful that, you know, he he allowed me to, to tell his story and, and to give me that access that you, that you mentioned, you know. Um, I spent about three days with him in Dallas uh, while he was training for the combine and for pro day. Uh, and then, you know, flew out to California to interview his mom and trainers and high school coach and, you know, go to his hometown and that kind of thing. And then met up with him again uh, for pro day and then met up with him again in California um, this past week for, for the draft. And so, uh, yeah, it's, you know, threw it all together in, in um, a little over a month. And yeah, and we'll we'll talk about that later in the show because I want to get into a little bit specifically of like how months, I guess. how how much how fast all of this has to come together after you make it. We'll get into the process okay, okay. of it, but we've got a bunch of questions pouring sure, in sure, already yeah. from the audience. So Caleb Hodges wants to know: Was it hard filming the series because of COVID? And you you dealt with this a little bit last year on Road mm -hmm. to the Pros too, Wes. But so so that was kind of the very beginning of it. And this year, you were kind of on the tail end of it. So I guess just talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so last year I did uh, the series with Henry Ruggs. And, you know, I had filmed everything basically before 
like it was really considered the pandemic and people were wearing masks and everything. Like I had done most of my filming in about February. And so by the time we got to the draft, which was April that, you know, we were, you know, that was kind of when it was, was hitting with, with the pandemic and everything. So I wasn't actually with Henry for his draft party. I got somebody to uh, send me footage. who was there. So that was a little complicated. Um, but by the time I got around to filming with Najee, I had already been uh, vaccinated. And, and so I felt comfortable taking my first flight, you know, in, in a year. Uh, I hadn't flown in a year. So I flew out to Dallas and, and then, you know, obviously flew to California twice. And so, um, but wore masks the whole time that my coworkers also wore masks the whole time. And like, we, we played it safe uh, as best that we could, but definitely felt better uh, having that, having that vaccine. <laughs> yeah. Came at just the right time for Road to the Pros. Uh, a question from Facebook uh, from from uh, Michael Casagrande oh. says, "Hey guys, so very very in depth question, but I do want to bring up Michael because Michael was there with you uh, during some of these interviews for Najee, and I, I guess just talk about a little bit about the team that you had working with you on this. Sure. I mean, you're the you're the the auteur of the series, but talk talk a little bit about who else worked on it with you." Yeah, so Michael was with me uh, in Dallas, uh, along with Laura Goldman, our fe my fellow uh, video producer. Um, so they helped me with, um, you know, Laura helped me with filming while he was training uh, and then setting up for the interviews that we shot out there in Dallas. And then Michael, obviously being the Alabama beat writer that he is, uh, has been following closely, uh, following Najee a lot closer uh, over the last few years than I have. Um, you know, as a video producer, I'm mostly, I'm going to the games, but I'm mostly filming highlights, press conferences, you know, hype videos, that kind of thing. So I'm not really like following their careers as closely as, as the beat writers are. So it was really helpful to have uh, Michael there, uh, especially for the interview, just, um, you know, to, to allow Najee, you know, to, to open up. And, and obviously Michael thought of a lot of questions that I didn't have on my list uh, as the interview progressed. And, and so, very thankful to have the help that I did. Um, Laura also helped me in the editing process um, in terms of, you know, organizing quotes and that kind of thing. So, well, you know, speaking of that interview, I, I know that you, I mean, as soon as that interview happened, you and Michael <laughs> both reached out to me. You're like, man, this is one of the best interviews we've ever been a part of. Yeah. And it kind of dovetails into a question from uh, Micah Young on YouTube who says, is he as funny in person as he is on camera? It I mean, he definitely has, I would say, kind of the the most outgoing personality that we've seen doing Road to the Pros for sure. Definitely, yeah. And he is as funny as, as he is on camera. I wish I could throw even more into the series. <laughs> we cut <laughs> a lot that out. Say. Safe, safe to say we cut a lot out, right? Yeah, we need to have like a like a like a blooper reel or something like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's he's constantly like you know, in a, in a goofy mood, funny mood, like always goofing around. Uh, and yeah, he, but he, he was also very open with us, uh, in the interview. And, and, and when we were talking about, you know, uh, more serious subjects, he, he, he was very good at shifting the tone and, and, and really opening up and, and, you know, he, he didn't have any problems like holding anything back. And, and that was one of the other reasons that Michael and I, you know, both agreed that this was, this was the best interview that, that, we had been a part of in our careers. Yeah, I, I for for those of you, and again, where if you're just joining us, we're talking about the uh, Road to the Pros documentary with Najee Harris. Wes here was the uh, the main creator behind that series. He he worked on it from start to finish, and uh, we're taking your questions. If you have any questions for Wes about kind of the making of this process or anything that he might have learned about Najee, but. Before we, we continue with that, I do want to show a clip for folks who have not maybe had a chance to see the series yet. You, you, you've you got kind of the, a fun mix of stuff in here, Wes, about his, his upbringing, which obviously had a lot of struggles involved with it. But so, so, there's, so there's some darkness in the story, but it's also a lot of fun because Najee is a fun guy and he's an incredibly fun player to watch. And one of, honestly, one of my favorite segments that you put together in this was the bit about uh, the hurdle and that that becoming a part of Najee's game basically so I'm going to play a, a quick clip uh, from that part of the documentary here real quick
the hurdle. The hurdle that scares my life. Yes, the hurdle. I don't like the hurdle. You know, running backs, they want that breakout run. You get the ball and just run it all the way in for that touchdown. But with a running back, what's the best way to stop them? It's to go for their ankles and their feet. And he said, that shit hurts. That's what he told I'm sorry, but that's what he told me. That, that shit hurts, mom. And so he started jumping them. And I was like, oh, you can't do that. We got to figure out another way because that's dangerous. I could just see somebody like catching you in the air. And oh, my God, you helicopter spinning across the field. No, don't. We're going to. But no, we just got better at it. We just, okay, fine. I'll just get better at it. Uh, but the first one was the sophomore year, and he, the guy was standing straight up and jumped right over him, and the guy just just totally missed. It just became something natural for him. You know, it was never planned. He, you know, uh, a lot of people don't know that he, he doesn't go into a game saying, today I'm going to hurdle somebody. That's, that's not his objective. That's not what he's looking to do. It's just he's such a tall kid, but you can't tell somebody, like, you know what I'm saying, like, don't jump over him. Well, that's just the reflection he has, you know? So that's the reaction, and I think Saban didn't like it either. So, yeah, fun, fun segment there talking about, um, you know, the, 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 the sort of mischievous aspect of Najee's personality that's just sort of built in, made its way onto the field. Um, and, you know, I, I think we'll, we'll, we'll talk about some of the people that you've interviewed, but, um, you know, Najee's mom, I think has to be said, was such oh, yeah. a huge part of this entire series coming together. I mean, she, I, I, it honestly wouldn't have happened without Najee's mom. Uh, no, so the original, uh, I guess, pitch that we made to Najee and his team, which it did take me a while to get in, in touch with his team, but um, Laura, who I mentioned earlier, had uh, put together a, a documentary a couple years ago about a couple years ago about uh, Tua Tungavailoa in Hawaii. So she she flew out to Hawaii with uh, Lauren Sisler, uh, another one of our uh, video producers, uh, a couple years ago, and. Sisler had been keeping in, and Najee was happened to be on this trip. Hang on one second. Najee happened to be on this trip with um, Tua. And so she kind of kept a relationship with Najee's mom over the years. And so Sisler was the one that actually spoke to uh, Najee first or Najee's mom first. And then she kind of put us in touch with his agent and it kind of went off, went from there. So um, yeah, I mean, Najee's mom is, is great, you know, awesome interview. Uh, really similar to Najee in a lot of ways. Um, but no, it, it definitely wouldn't have happened with, without her. Um, we, we've got another uh, question from our viewers, Wes, about the series and just kind of how it came together. Adam Curry wants to know how long did it take to film the series? And I think this is a good <coughs> opportunity also just to kind of talk about how fast this whole thing comes together when, when you do it. Uh, yeah, well, if you're just asking about the filming alone, um, <laughs> you know, that's actually not as long as the editing, but let's see, we flew to Dallas, I think it was like March 8th, um, and we spent three days with, with Najee in Dallas as he was training, so we ate. Yeah, well, and to, and to back this up for just a second, sorry to, to, to interrupt you there, but like, I, I'm not sure if people are aware, but like, basically, we can't even start proposing this as a thing to do to these players until we know that they're coming out and entering the NFL draft. Right. So this isn't like a thing that we had in the works for a long time. Like we couldn't even start asking the question of, do you want to do this with us until like middle of January? So we, yeah. it, it all has to come together really quickly. Yeah. Like during the season, if they're playing football, you know, if they're still, you know, on the team, then we're not, you know, we can't just like call them up and, and pitch them. To right. this. Everything has to be controlled through, through the university. So the minute that they decide to leave and go to the NFL, that's when it kind of opens up and that's when we are, are free to contact them and, and do what we want with them. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, I started the process in, in terms of trying to reach out to him probably in, you know, January, February, but it wasn't really until March that I was finally able to reach Najee's team um, and his agent and his marketing team and all that. So we flew out to Dallas, I think it was March 8th, filmed for three days, filmed him training and in, in his interview, then flew back to Alabama. 
and then flew to California, spent four days in California in the Oakland area in Antioch where Najee's from. So uh, interviewed his mom, interviewed his high school coach, interviewed his trainer, and interviewed another one of his coaches. So did four interviews out there, then flew back to Birmingham, uh, met up with him at Pro Day, did another quick interview there. Um, so in terms of the actual filming, you know, I would say maybe about a week, but the editing is really is really where the the time is is spent. <laughs> that's where that's where Wes really digs in. Um, I, I've got I've got another one. Just just I, not really a question. I just wanted to make sure that you saw this comment, Wes, from Obi Wan Jesus. Hey. It says dope series, Nodge, a real one. <laughs> <So> <laughs> appreciation. I'm a, I'm a big Star Wars guy, so yeah, yeah I, I appreciate that, Obi Wan Jesus. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I want to show another clip from the from the documentary real quick from the most recent episode, uh, the last episode of the series where, you know, you mentioned that you flew out to Oakland for. Oh, I didn't include this filming for the last episode. Yeah, no, last but week, you. Yeah. Last week I, I filmed for another day out there with him. So um, maybe eight days total of filming, I guess. Yeah. Um, and, and we're going to. So I, I want to just show kind of some of what you got out there in Oakland. Before we do that, I'm going to. We got another question just now that I think is a good one to take real quick. Um, just says, was there any backup plan if Najee wasn't taken in the first round? And and you did have a you did have sort of an idea. I mean, we knew it was going to be kind of on the fringe. Yeah, we figured Najee would be mid mid first round, late first round. Uh, most projections had him going to the Steelers at twenty four overall. Some of them had him going at sixteen to the Cardinals. If the Steelers hadn't taken him, I think there was a good chance the Bills might have taken him at thirtieth overall. Uh, I really would have been shocked if he if he dropped to the second round, but I had made plans to stay in California for a couple days after that. So I would have I would have met up with him the next day. I don't know if he would have had an, another big, you know, get together yeah. and, and celebration. Um, I'm I'm happy the way that it, that it played out um, because obviously you want to you want to go the the first the first night. Uh, so um, yeah. I, I still would have been with him. I just don't know if it would have been as elaborate of a of a celebration as, sure. as you're about to see. <laughs> yeah. So let's go ahead and show that celebration because um, because I think it's I think it was definitely a a cool moment and you really let it just kind of play out too. I, I that's part of what I like about how you handled it is you know you you didn't necessarily cut in. You didn't do a lot of interviews in this part. You just kind of let people experience it, which I think is really cool. So let's let's play that real quick. So, so my first question watching that clip, Wes, is did you get Cristal on your camera? I mean, you can see it on the lens a little <laughs> bit. Like you can see the water or the champagne, you know. Uh, there was even more of it after that, and I was like shielding my camera. <laughs> like I felt like I got what I needed, but yeah. then after that it kept coming, and I, I just started to like cover my camera up. But uh, – if the camera has any issues, I think you'll know why. Yeah, flashbacks to uh, to to you and I covering uh, the the scene in Birmingham during the World Cup, whenever that was, a few years ago. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> so, a, a beer hit me right in the right directly in the, yeah. in the camera, right? Yep, yeah, right in my phone. <laughs> yeah, somebody um, threw it directly backwards. <laughs> So a, a, a good question that I am glad someone gave us the opportunity to talk about uh, from Kevin L. Washington wants to know, how much fun was it to interview Marshawn Lynch? We definitely need to talk about this one. Oh, my Wes. God. Uh, yeah, the, I, I still can't believe that actually happened. <laughs> uh, I know Marshawn doesn't do a lot of interviews. Yeah. He's like a huge fan of the media. But he obviously signed Najee to his, his marketing team, Beast Mode. Um, 
you know, I, I had met a couple people that were close to Marshawn when I was in Oakland the first time. Uh, they actually gave me a pretty sweet uh, uh, beast mode like hoodie while I was out there. They showed me around like this barber shop. Uh, like Marshawn owns like a couple blocks in Oakland where I was staying. So I was able to meet people close to him and, and basically was begging them for, for several weeks. Like, you know, to, to, I just need like nine or 10 questions. Uh, he, he unfortunately wasn't out there when I was filming uh, the first time. So I gave them, you know, like until the very last moment that I needed it for episode three. So I actually didn't do that interview until like the day before episode three went up. Are you hearing that uh, on the uh, broadcast? I, can, I, I can't hear your your chimes. Okay. You're very popular. Oh, sorry about man. that. Sorry people about are, that. People are blowing you up. It's no big deal. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, so I was able to do a Zoom interview with Marshawn Lynch the day before it, the third episode went up, and he was he was just you know really funny, like like really gave me a lot of great information. Uh, and I wish I could I wish I could post that full interview. That Marshawn, I talked to him for about 20, 20, a little over 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, and he, and he's, a, he's pretty similar to Najee. You know, he, he doesn't really have much of, <laughs> much of a filter and just kind of tells you how he feels about stuff. Um, but he had a lot of great things to say about Najee. And, and I, I kept the interview strictly about, about Najee. And, and he's a big fan, obviously, <laughs> uh, being from the same area that Najee's from, you know, having a lot of the same interests, doing a lot of off the field, you know, social work and that kind of thing. Um, I think that, Najee's a good fit for for Marshawn's uh, marketing team, and uh, obviously Marshawn's just a, a big fan of Najee. So it was it was it was fun it was a fun interview. Yeah, um, another one that I, I I think some folks may you know you've got a lot of people in this, but but one notable absence uh, is asking about Nick Saban. Did we try to get a Nick Saban interview for the documentary? I'll I'll go ahead and and throw out there, you know. I wouldn't say that that Saban is is not willing to talk about his players, and he has talked about Najee obviously a ton. But uh, he can be very difficult to get it for a one on one <laughs> interview, which I think is really what we try to build this documentary around. Um, so uh, you know, we didn't have a one on one with Nick Saban, but you did get Taj Lupo Taj Lupoy, who who you know was really instrumental in Najee coming to Alabama. Yeah, so Tosh, uh, you know, he was he was Najee's primary recruiter when he was at Alabama. Um, he's from the Bay Area where Najee's from, and so he was able to provide a lot of insight from that perspective. Um, and that was another Zoom interview that I was able to get. Uh, he works for the he's he's the linebackers coach for the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars right now. So the Jaguars helped me out uh, getting getting me in touch with Tosh. So he did he did provide some good some good insight. Um, for, for the series. Uh, but yeah, I w obviously would have loved to talk to Nick Saban uh, for this series. Would love to talk to Nick Saban every year for this series, honestly. Like like I said, I've been doing yeah. it for, for four years. I've covered Rashawn Evans, Deontay Thompson, um, Henry Ruggs, and now and now uh, Najee Harris. But, um, you know, I've just got so much other things going on. And, and like, like, Matt, like Matt said, it, it, it is very difficult to get a one-on-one -on -one, uh, with Nick Saban. And so uh, it's not something that we've ever had, um, but maybe like one day, maybe, maybe one day, is, maybe, this maybe is the breakthrough, <laughs> maybe he'll see this Najee Harris series and, and he'll, he'll call us up next year. Yeah. Um, well, Wes, I've, we, we've, uh, we've had a, a ton of questions already. I, I've got one more that I want to just throw at you uh, before we wrap up the show. And, and, you know, if anybody else watching has one, we've, we'll, we've got maybe time for one or two more, but my question for you making this series, Wes, is, you know, and, and like you said, this is, I think, is this the fourth year that you've done Road to the Pros at this point? Yes, this is, this wraps the fourth year. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you and I used to both uh, cover recruiting. So we've, we've seen these guys, I think, at almost every stage of their career and have kind of been you know, allowed to have a lot of access to them and get to talk to them and in, in moments when not a lot of people get to talk to these players. But to me, this, this whole series and working on it is the first time that I was ever really around guys at the moment, at this part of their career, the moment where it stops being about, you know, hope and, and we hope it goes well. And there's a lot of potential to, 
I made it. Like this is in a lot of ways. I mean, like these guys want to have long careers in the NFL, but in a lot of ways, this is the moment for them. And this is when you made it, you know, um, what, what has been kind of the most interesting part, I guess, for you, particularly being around families and players at this exact moment when they get this news? Oh, I mean, it's always, you know, it's always a, a special moment and I, and I try to, to do my best to capture it, but also not overstep and, and you know, just kind of keep my distance as, as best I can and, and uh, just really, like you said earlier, just kind of film it and just not really interject or anything and let them celebrate. You know, I, I always try to catch up with them after they're drafted for a quick interview when they're done, but usually that's like at least an hour after they after they're done you know, celebrating and then they got to talk to the team and they got to do some press conferences. They got to do other media. They got to, you know, celebrate with, with friends and family. Like I, I, I want to just be as, as, as far away as I can, but, but try to capture as much as, as I can, but it is, you know, it is really special to, to be in the room for that kind of thing. You know, we've had different reactions over the years. Some guys have kind of been, you know, played it a little cool. Some guys have gotten emotional. Um, so it's been a wide range of, of, uh, reactions that I've seen um, over the years. I, I also do the series with with uh, Auburn players. So I do two of these per year. Uh, so the other player I was doing was Anthony Schwartz. And I wasn't able to be with Anthony uh, because I was in California with Najee, but Clay Yeager, my, my co-producer, was with Anthony. And, and that was a totally different reaction. And, and we're getting ready to post that episode today. So um, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, it's a crazy thing to watch these guys all, all of a sudden, you know, have their dreams realized and, and, you know, overcome with, with happiness and, and just, it's, it's, uh, it's one of, one of the highlights of, of my job, I would say. Uh, a couple more questions before we wrap up. Cause Ooh. we've got, we've had a few more coming in. Who are you hoping to do a <laughs> documentary on next year? Yeah. We got to give Wes a break, but mm. I, I will say this. I, I think a lot of people maybe wonder how we pick, who we're going to do it on. And it's, it's always, it's not always our choice. You know, we don't, um, some guys don't want to do it for, for various reasons, but I would also say we don't really even decide who we want to approach about it until like December really. Um, because we don't know how you don't, you don't, I mean, I, I think there's a good group of guys, for example, at Alabama next year, there's, there's Evan Neal, the offensive lineman. There's, um, you know, Christian Harris, the linebacker, there's, John Mechie, we know Alabama has, has a good record now of putting wide receivers in the first round. But I think we try to think about, you know, a, a guy who is a combination of he has an interesting story and he, he has a chance of going pretty high in the draft. Now, we've done guys that, that didn't go high in the draft, but, but I think we, we look for ideally somebody who's a combination of those two things. And a good, and a good on-camera personality. You know, right. You, don't, you, you want something, you want somebody that will be engaging, uh, that will be open. Um, so yeah, kind of a mix, you try to find a mix of like, you know, somebody who's going to go high in the draft, somebody who, you know, Alabama fans and Auburn fans are big fans of, uh, somebody who's good on camera and somebody who has an interesting story. So it is, it is a difficult <laughs> process. Like once you narrow it down, then you have to start pitching it to the guys. And, and, you know, so, uh, I, to be honest, I have not put much thought into next. No, year. no. And we, uh, we won't for a while, but, <laughs> but, but I mean, I, I think it's interesting to talk about how we end up choosing the players that we do for the, yeah. for the series. Uh, la- last question. We'll wrap it up after this one. Another one from energetic adventures. He's been, a, a big participator today. So we appreciate you. Uh, what was your favorite? I guess he's talking about out of the four episodes of this. Uh, do, do you have a, did you have a favorite in terms of filming? Is he asking about the four episodes or the four players I've covered? I, I think Is, he's, well, that actually, you're right. That could, I've actually <laughs> covered eight. Way. Yeah, that's right. If you can count the Auburn ones, but I would say Najee, this, this series overall of the eight players that I've done, this was my favorite. Um, if I had a favorite episode of, of Najee's four episodes, it would probably be the second episode, uh, that focused on his Alabama career. There was just so much that we were trying to cover with that episode. Um, it was the longest one that I've done in four years. It, it was bordering on 30 minutes long, but it, it covered, you know, his, his, the culture shock that he experienced when he got to Alabama, it covered, um, you know, his feelings of, of wanting to transfer flying to California 
constantly because he, he was homesick, uh, you know, finding his role on the team and, and, and starting to get some playing time. There was the, the uh, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement uh, on Alabama's campus that Najee helped orchestrate. Uh, there was, you know, a segment on some gun violence, uh, some friends that he had lost to gun violence in California. And then, you know, just uh, kind of bookending his career with, with a national championship his freshman year, a national championship his, his senior year. Um, and then him kind of realizing like, yeah, I, I didn't, you know, there wasn't, there were some things I didn't like about Alabama, but ultimately like this was the place that for me, this is where I needed to be to achieve my dream of, of making it to the NFL. So a, a jam packed episode, but I would say that second episode of Najee was my favorite, but overall not this Najee series was, was the best I've done, I, I believe. And we were, we were a little worried how Alabama fans would, would take to that answer when we heard him talking about that stuff. But honestly, for the most part, we it seems like most Bama fans <clears throat> were receptive to that and understood what he was trying to say. You know, I mean, it's a big, big adjustment. I think everybody, <clears throat> everybody knows that California is a very different place from Alabama. Sure. I think I think people from Alabama would maybe not necessarily be comfortable in California either. So um, easy to understand where he's coming from on that. <laughs> and um, you know, I, I was surprised at how <clears throat> at how little pushback there was to those comments. Um, but yeah, I mean, just he, he's a, he's a very well liked guy in this fan base. And I think always will be in Wes. I think you've, you've potentially contributed to that in some ways because you let people see parts of Najee's yeah. story and his personality that they wouldn't have otherwise gotten to see. Yeah. That's always something I try to do with the series is, is not just focus so much on the football. It's, it's almost like a secondary thing, uh, the football aspect of their lives. I, I really try to tell their, life story and, and, uh, what they've been through and, you know, what they're passionate about and, and, you know, so that once, once they're drafted in the NFL, you know, these, his, his new fans, the Pittsburgh Steelers, like they can watch this series and, and have a really good understanding of, you know, who Najee is. Uh, obviously they know he's a great football player. This, you know, their team just selected him in the first round. Like that's a no brainer, but, um, I really want to kind of, that's, that's what I want to come through is, is, uh, you know, an understanding of like who these people are and, and what they've been through. So, um, yeah, that's, that's my goal. <laughs> well, well done, Wes. And, Thank you. and to everybody who, who has, again, who've not seen it yet, uh, we'll, we'll drop a link into the full series here, wherever you're watching this, but road to the pros on Najee Harris, just a phenomenal achievement. Um, and, and a great, great insight into one of the most interesting players that's come through Alabama football in recent years. So uh, go check out the full series. All four episodes are now up uh, wherever you're watching this. And yep. uh, we, we thank everybody who dropped in comments today. Uh, really good discussion. We ended up going a lot longer than I, than I thought we would. So uh, Wes, thanks. Thanks again to, uh, to you for dropping in and, and giving us your perspective on it. And thanks to Milo's our sponsor who sponsored yep. road to the pros. Uh, and all of our NFL draft coverage. So everybody uh, have a great weekend, and we will see you next week on Bammers.